hello and how are you welcome back to the slightly warped podcast i'm rick that's big show and we're here to bring you another good episode show how you doing man i'm good how about yourself sir i'm good except for this heat i'm tired of oh yeah triple digit days it is it is hot oh yeah they testing my air conditioner man they tested it. <laughs> car in the house couple things to get to today you know we are rapidly approaching the 200th episode of the podcast i think we're like four or five episodes out we got something really special to do for that 200th episode so keep that in the back of your mind over the next couple of days and we'll we'll probably throw i'll put my ideas. thinking cap on yeah um as far as this here episode couple things that i want to go over the olympics are upon us mm -hmm. all right i'm not gonna lie to you haven't been watching uh for whatever reason i just i'm not big on the olympic games right now um but that debacle or whatever you want to call it caught my attention and, you know, all the people that are, quote unquote, boycotting the Olympics or um, they have something to say about the uh, musical during the uh, ceremony. And I did see the ceremony and it was part of that thing that I sent you. And mm -hmm. good, bad, indifferent, right, wrong. You can draw your own conclusions. Um, I will say this. As far as the people that are boycott, boycotting the ceremony, the athletes had nothing to do with the ceremony. So, you know, by boycotting it, that doesn't really do anything for anybody. So you have that there. Secondly, you can say what you will about the musical number. I'm going to say this. Whether it was mocking Christianity or whether it was mocking, you know, some other religion or anything like that. It, it was kind of lame. And I think on that, we can all agree. Yeah, it was kind of dumb. I, that's all I got on that. <laughs> I mean, <sighs> I don't know how I feel about that opening ceremony. You know, I know you sent me that video and I've, I've read a bunch of the outrage of, um, you know, that it's mocking Christianity. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I mean, when uh, you look at the I mean, there are similarities. Table, it did look like the painting, the last up it did. I mean, but... there are similarities. I mean, but mm -hmm. that's, are they, does it look like the painting because so many people pointed that out to you so you're already looking for it? Or did when you first see it, that's what you immediately thought of? Mm -hmm. That's what it boils down to for me. Right. Yeah, And I don't want to be necessarily suggested by somebody else's opinion about it. I'm not saying that it is. I'm not saying that it isn't. I mean, I, I didn't watch it live, so I, I, I can't really give you an honest opinion of what I thought about it because I've already read all everybody's points of view on it. You know, um, there are a lot of suggestive things that once you look at it, you're like, well, you know, that's bad taste, you know, um, to me, I, I would go back to, um, you know, what year did Tropic Thunder come out? What year was that? Ooh, I'm not sure the year, but it's been it's been a minute. Nineties, right? It wasn't yeah. the eighties, right? It was no, it was, was the nineties. It was the end of the nineties, I believe, like ninety eight, somewhere in there. I mean, was Robert Dunning Jr. portraying blackface, you know, and being a racial person by doing that in the movie? I mean, some people say yes, some people say no. I mean, to me, that's kind of like the same argument. You know, some people see it one way, some people see it the other way. Um, it's not for me to judge. Um, that's God's uh, job. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
Um, and I'm with you about boycotting the Olympics. The, the, the athletes didn't do anything. Um, you're not hurting the Olympic games by boycotting, you know, it's not like you're, you, you know, even if a million people boycotted it, they're still going to go. I mean, right. let's go back three years ago. It was COVID. So, you know, not everybody was in the stands, but they still held the games. So I'm just saying. Yeah. I mean, at the very, I do think it was in bad taste. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was very lame. Um, as far as but I am watching the games. I am watching. I watch at them. There's a few events. I like I watch the gymnastics. I like to watch that. Um, I like to watch the swimming. And then I'll watch a little bit of the track. But other than that, you know, I might check in and see how the judo guys are doing or maybe watch a boxing match, but I don't follow it like I would. Like the, tonight, I think, I mean, I already know the outcome, unfortunately, because of the internet. But, you know, I'll watch the ladies do their thing. And then, uh, you know, after that, it'll be just kind of, I'll just kind of, oh, this is interesting. Let me take a look. Like yesterday, I happened to watch the tail end of France versus America ladies rugby, you know, nothing I follow, but it was interesting to me at the moment. So I sat and watched it. We got our asses beat, but still, I think we lost 31 to 14 or something like that. Now I'm going to say this one last thing about the, uh, the ceremony, the musical, whatever you want to call it. The mm -hmm. only people that know for sure whether it was intentionally mocking Christianity were the people that put it together. And if you are a Christian, I mean, a true, true Christian, make an informed decision. Don't just hate it because somebody else said something. Uh, like Show said a few minutes ago, judge not lest ye be judged. That's in every Christian well, Bible. It, it is, but it also, you are supposed to speak out against it as well, which is what these people are doing, which I have no problem with that either. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but if you speak out and then they speak back and say, no, that wasn't our intention. Which is what they said. Yeah, at, at that point. I guess well, I, their do. explanation was, what well, it was it was actually about the Greek god, yes. Di, uh, whatever, Dionysus. diarrhea, whatever his name is. <laughs> Yeah, and, you know, it, so it, that's pretty much sums up the, the musical, right? Uh, and I don't know what that blue dude was. Uh, in the that movie. was the god. That was oh, the god. That was, okay, yeah. diarrhea for sure. Yeah. So, um, while everybody was up in arms over that, I was busy in the comfort of my own theater watching Deadpool and Wolverine. Now. It hasn't even been out for a week, so I'm not giving away any spoilers. I'm just going to give y'all a quick review. If you're a comic book fan, comic book movie fan, go see this movie. If you're a Deadpool fan, go see this movie. If you're a Wolverine fan, go see this movie. If you're an X-Men fan, go see this movie. Uh, it's a wonderful, some people call it a love letter. I call it a tribute to uh, the Fox universe. Uh, and at the same time, Deadpool's busting out and he's making his way to the MCU. Uh, it addresses all of that. Some people will say it's weak on plot. It has, it has a decent plot for an action movie. No action movie is ever going to make you work calculus in the middle of the movie. Let's just face that. It's this is not. true. So good guy versus bad guy. Exactly. So just, uh, sit back, relax, eat your popcorn and watch the movie. I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to see it this week. Maybe we can discuss it in a future episode. All right, we can do that. So, um, did you happen to see that uh, football ranking thing that uh, I sent you? I did. What is it? Pro football, pro pro football talk, pro football focus. Probably. Focus, I think. Thank you. Yeah. All right. I have several problems with the rankings. And I guess they went one through 28. So they didn't even bother with uh, the last three because those teams they feel are not even worthy. Okay. Let me start with the top row. I have a problem with number one and number two. Number one is the Niners. Number two is the Chiefs. Didn't they play in the Super Bowl? Yeah. Who won that game? The Chiefs. 
then why are the Chiefs ranked behind the Niners? A team that they beat this, not once, but twice in the Super Bowl. True, but the first Super Bowl in 2019, you can't count that for these rankings. And technically, you shouldn't count last year's Super Bowl for these rankings. It's not a it's not a preseason poll. It's just they're who they think has the strongest power ranking. And I'm okay with it. 49ers are loaded. But are they, though? Sure. Who'd they lose? I'll wait. Oh, no. They didn't lose anybody, but... Exactly. They're loaded. They, they, they didn't they, win they, at they, all. They, are, are it doesn't gonna... matter. We're not talking about last year. That's not what this is. This but isn't the said, final... But you just said who'd they lose. So you are talking about what they had last year compared to what they have this year. What Right, because the players that you have on the team, mm -hmm. are those players on this year's team? Yes. Yeah. So we're talking about the players this year. I mean, you can you can easily say the Chiefs defense got weaker. We lost Legereus Sneed. Okay. You can easily say that. I, I, who I did see the where you're coming from. Who did That's the cool. Niners lose? They didn't. So I, I mean, I'm okay with it. You know, when you look at it that way, yeah, you're right. And I guess I am looking at it more like a preseason poll, and I shouldn't. But yes, it's not me, like college or, you know, like that. No, to me, it's more of a respect factor, too. Um, I, and, and, you know, I can't believe I'm saying this about the Chiefs, but they won two of the last three Super Bowls. Give them some respect. Andy Reid is making some things happen up in there. So that man obviously knows what he's doing. And I just feel like it's kind of like disrespect to say, no, nah, you're not good enough to be the number one team. You and never won until you get knocked off. That's not really a fair statement, too. They won two of the last three Super Bowls. They didn't play in the third Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> we couldn't win it. Good point. Good point. Um, but, yeah. All right. I see what you're talking about that. You know, when, when you look at that uh, three and four, I, I, I feel like... And, and it's actually... The record it it actually says it's each NFL roster ranked, so they're basically ranking the rosters, not necessarily the teams. If that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So that may play into a, a lot of what I think about it because I feel like the Jets shouldn't be four. Um, yeah, I tend to agree with that as well. I feel like the Lions should be higher than the Eagles too. The Lions didn't lose anybody. And they were like literally a play away from getting into the Super Bowl. Yeah, but you're talking about last year. No, uh, yeah, yeah. You're we're right. We're looking at the roster this year. And can you on paper look at the roster from the Eagles and look at the roster of the Lions, which I'm gonna type up here. We'll go through it real quick. While you're looking for that, I do want to point out that I think that the 23rd team is ranked too high. They should put us at number 31, 31, 32. Go for it. Um, because we are getting disrespected by a, a, a lot of people. So I want to keep that up. All right. So let's see here. Nope, that's not going to help me. Keep talking so we don't have dead air time here. Oh, yeah. No dead air. I'm sorry about that, folks. Um, you know, based on what you're saying, yeah, I can see that then with Dallas, uh, the Bills, and the Dolphins. Those are three teams that, on paper, they've got the horses to be where they are. But you know at least two of those three teams will screw it up some kind of way. You just know that. Uh in that middle of the pack, Green Bay, I, I think they've earned a little bit more than that because uh, that's a dangerous team. Jordan Love is just now learning how to play quarterback, and he just got paid. Um, what surprises me is, and, and I know it's two different teams, but uh, the Packers and the Texans, to me, are the same team. One's in the NFC, one's in the AFC. 
They're that team that's sneaky. They will surprise you and they will go farther than you give them credit for. And uh, they will to, upset to, teams that they shouldn't. You have to change your outlook on this particular thing. No, I'm just we're talking about overall. Talk, I'm not talking about ranking. We're, I'm not, we're not talking about their record. Yeah. Or their potential. No, no, I'm not I'm not looking at this piece of paper here. I'm just comparing those two teams, uh, the similarities as far as, you know, um, they have the potential to beat anybody. I mean, everybody does, but especially those teams, and they're well coached. They are well coached. I will give you that. All right, so let's just go here. Okay, so quarterback, Detroit Lions, golf, Eagles, Hurts. Who who gets the edge on that? Hurts. Okay. All right. Running back. Eagles have Saquon Barkley. Lions have David Montgomery. Ooh. I forgot they picked Bar Barkley. Mm. And they already are good on fourth and short. Now you have so to who, account I for mean, the quarterback the, and the running back. No, don't worry. Who's the better running back? Saquon Barkley. Okay, so you have two for Eagles, zero for Lions. Yeah, I, so I see you, where you're going with this. Okay. Wide, rec wide receiver for the Lions, Amon Ross St. Brown, Jamison Williams, Khalif Raymond. Eagles, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Paris Campbell. Damn, you just tearing my whole theory down. <laughs> Detroit Lions tied in. Sam Laporta, Eagles, Dallas Garden. I'd probably give that to Detroit. Yeah, that Detroit one, Philly four, whatever. You know, let's just do defense real quick. Defensive end for the Lions, Aiden Hutchinson. Uh, left defensive Milton Williams for the for the Eagles. So we'll give the I'm Lions go that Detroit, credit. Yeah, yeah. I give Lions that one. Uh, defensive tackles, DJ Reader and Aline McNeil. Eagles. They play a 3-4, so they only have one DT, but it's Jordan Davis. I'm trying to see who their backup is. Marlon Tipalutitototo, whatever his name is. Wow. Uh, you know, they might have the better defensive line, the Eagles. I mean, the Lions. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking at the Lions linebackers. Well, I'm going to say the Eagles have a better secondary. I know that. Jack Campbell, Alex Ann Azalone, and Derek Barnes are their linebackers. Eagles have Zach Braun, Devin White, Nolan Smith, and Quinion Mitchell. It's probably a wash for me because I only know one from each one. Uh, Detroit's safeties are Brian Branch and Kirby Joseph. Eagles safeties are C.J. Gardner-Johnson and Reed Blankenship. Eagles all day long on that. Their corners are Darius Slay and Avante Maddox. The Lions corners are Teron Arnold and Amik Robertson. Toast. So I would still say the Eagles have the better roster. Yes. Yes, they overall. do. Overall. But... Are the Lions better than the Jets and the Ravens? I mean, I'd have to do that too, but I do yeah. think the Jets are a little bit too high. I mean, because I can only think of two, maybe three players that just jump out at you right now from, well, actually just one for me, and that's obviously I will say the quarterback this for the Jets. and Sauce Gardner. If they had any kind of quarterback last year, I mean, any kind of quarterback, they would have won at least two or three more games. Yeah, same with the Raiders. Well, you know, the rookie turned if it on. If they had you know, at the any end, but... kind of quarterback at all, they would have won a couple more games. And that would have got us in the playoffs, and we would have lost in the first round, and we'd still be having this conversation. So, But you'd be in the playoffs. That's true. Uh yeah. The Ravens, they're at number five. I mean, it's probably only the fact because they signed Derrick Henry that mm -hmm. he gets that they're they're that high. I'm all right with this roster. This this doesn't Pete 
Pro football focus sucks anyway. I don't ever listen to what they got to say. You heard it here first, folks. Pro football focus sucks, according to Big Show. Yes. So, show? You can take that to the bank. We uh, teased everybody last week and said, hey, we're going to talk some Game of Thrones uh, this week. And uh, your little plan that you concocted, spend each week talking about a season, one through eight. And it is we, fitting that we start with the first season here. Now, we might have to extend season eight. We we might because we, we, there we, there's a couple there's a couple huge episodes in there that we probably need to discuss separately. Okay, you know we got nothing but time. You know we got nothing but time. This might go longer than eight weeks, but so on this Game first of Thrones season, season one, what mm -hmm. would you rate it? What would you get? What grade would you give it? Man, and this is just me. Mm -hmm. I would give it a C, a and, and I'm assuming that you went in with it. With absolutely no knowledge. Absolutely. I wasn't okay. familiar with the books. I wasn't familiar with anything. I was just really watching it because Heather was watching it. I didn't know who these people were. I didn't know what was going on. But I tell you what, as we got into the middle of the season, there was a lot of wow factor. It was like, he did that? She did that? I I'm not even going to say the middle of the season. You open episode one, excuse me, you close episode one with a little boy getting pushed out a window. Um, the very next episode, yeah, uh, the father takes the uh, girl's pet and kills it. So I'm wondering, what are we getting into? What is this winter is coming stuff? And and also, the the thing that let me down, or I wouldn't say let me down, but it was hard to uh really get it in gear. I didn't know who these characters were. I know you've got the Starks. You've got the Lannisters and you've got the Targaryens and then everybody in between. But season one was more of a learning experience for me. And once I that got that sense. down, then I could just roll with it. So season one is going to be the lowest grade. I'll tell you that right now of all eight seasons. And I give them a C. I'm, I'm okay with that. Now, the books came out, I believe, in 93 or 95, mid 90s. Okay. Somewhere this the Game of Thrones, the actual first book came out then. <clears throat> and I forget when the show came out. I want to say like 2007 or something like that. Uh, 2008. Okay. So. We will give you a fun fact. And I just read this because I haven't seen it. I don't think anybody's going to ever see it. The pilot episode was actually reshot. HBO ordered it to be reshot because it was so bad that they wanted it done over. So I don't think anybody will ever see what we would have saw. And it was, it's a slow burn. I mean, yes. it, 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 it burns slow for the first few episodes and then it yanks you by the collar and you're on, you're along for a ride. Yeah, um, definitely. But me personally, I, 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 if you asked me when I first watched the season, I would probably say C with you. Mm -hmm. uh, just because I went into that season not knowing anything either. I started reading the books because of season one. Mm, okay. So by the time season two came out, I already was three books in. And okay. at that time, there were four. And now there are five, and there's supposed to be a six and a seven. He's been writing book six, which I think is called... Hmm. The winds, the winds of winter, or something of that nature. Uh, he's been writing that for. It was supposed to come out in twenty twenty two or twenty three, and he still is not done with it. He says he still has like fifteen hundred pages left, or some bullshit like that. Um, and but I digress. We're gonna stick with 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 season one and and book one. Now, after the fact, now that I've watched it, I've watched the series multiple times just because it enthralls me, mm -hmm. and I learn something new every time I watch it. I'm be like, ah, oh, that makes perfect sense in later seasons, you know. Um, which is why I'm really giddy about Dance of the Dragons. Uh, but I will say, as for the show itself. Sticking to the book, A plus, A plus. 
they did hit it. They hit a home run with that book, with the season one. They did perfect. If you have never read the book and you've watched season one, after watching season one, you can say you read book one because it basically happened. Now, granted, there are a few certain, a few things that weren't in the show and a few things that the characters were explained differently versus what we see on, on the screen. But yeah, it, it, it was phenomenal after the fact. So, yeah. you know, like if you, you ask me now, I grade it. Slow burn. A plus. Yeah. It's definitely a slow. Burn. It's kind of like the walking dead. Uh, a lot of people can't get through the first season, you know, but if you actually stick with it, mm -hmm. It it grabs you by the collar and takes you through it. You know, it it's a definitely a slow burn as well. But they got to lay all the foundation, yeah. Because the the story is called a song of ice and fire, and and a Game of Thrones, and it's it's a game that these guys are playing, and it's a game of life or death. But you have to sound, set the foundation and the rules of the game in the first book in the first season, which I think they did a remarkable now, job. In that first season, who were your standout characters just in that first season? Man, I mean, they all stood out individually. Um, I mean, it, you you hated Cersei from Jump oh, Street yes. and, and, and Jamie. You yeah, hated that. that, that and you that also thought that they just blew my mind. Right. Um, you know, I loved Jon Snow. Uh, I could care less at the time. I could care less about Bran, which is the little boy. Mm -hmm. uh, Rob, um, Arya, she was cool. Sansa, she was cool. You know. Um, oh, she got on my jo nerves. Joffrey, you know, he was all right until the very end. And you're like, asshole. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you like you liked Eddard Stark. I I never was a Baelish fan. You know, Littlefinger fan. Yeah, Never he was, was very uh, sneaky from the beginning. Uh -huh. You knew there was. But an he's, but he is one of the smartest characters out of the whole series. That that's why he lasted as long as he did. For the for the most part, yeah, yeah. I I, I did hate seeing uh, what happened to Ned, but you know, keep in mind I never read the books, so I didn't see it coming. I, you know. I figured he's. I didn't see it coming either here. when I saw the show. Yeah. yeah, but it's it's so critical. Yeah, yeah, because because what for happens future to that family, events? Yeah, what happens to that family? That whole Stark family. Um, it, it was just a wow factor, and and it it. If I had stopped after episode five. I would have missed out on a lot of good television. Oh, yeah. I mean, the acting was great. I don't think they could have picked better actors. Because even as I re read future books, in my mind's eye, I now had a face to a character. So when I'm reading the chapter of Cersei, that's who I picture. If I yes. read the chapter of Tyrion, that was who I pictured, you know, from what I've mm -hmm. seen on the television screen. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely, and, and what I also enjoyed about the book and the show mm -hmm. is, uh, the way that little decisions made huge repercussions yes. and consequences yeah. for a bunch of people that the person that made said decision didn't really realize was going to happen. Going just back to what happened to Ned. I mean, he's good friends with the king. You didn't see that coming. What? Not, didn't see what coming? Whoosh. Well, I mean, by that time, yes, you knew Ed was going to die before he died. You knew that because they told him, you know, why? you're going to die. I didn't know it, know it, because I wasn't familiar, like I said, with anything. I thought they, they were going to pull some rabbit out of the hat or something. You know, before nah, the, I mean the way that, that when but if you go back a few episodes before that, when mm -hmm. her when uh he and Cersei were talking and he was telling her, You need I'm going to tell Robert that those kids aren't yours. 
and you need to leave because I don't want to shed no bloodshed. And she basically gave him the middle finger and said, I don't care what you tell him. I'm going anywhere because when you play the Game of Thrones, you either win or you die. So I knew from that right then that one of those two people ain't making it out of the season. And, you know, the way Cersei kept her power, I, I knew no matter what Eddard said, he was going to be killed. Yeah. Now, the way he was murdered, I mean, I didn't know he was going to get beheaded, you know. Um, and I didn't realize Joffrey was going to show his, his daughter, you know, his head on a spike. You know that type of thing, uh, but and, and I knew, his, like you said, little decisions have big outcomes. You know, yeah. once and when it and when he decided to side with the Lannisters, it was too late. Yeah, and and the damage it, it had affected already been the done. whole family. Yeah, yeah, it it put everybody down a, I won't say dark road, but a crazy road. It was dark everybody it re yeah i mean it really everybody everybody was affected mm -hmm. all characters from season one were affected at some point or time and and paid the consequences for all the decisions they made in season one yes it, 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 it i am very glad that you know i stuck with it i am very glad that uh you know, I'm like, hey, let me give episode six a chance. Okay, this is getting good, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, you know, that sprung to season two, three, four, et cetera. And, and, and again, I'll reiterate before we close this out. Season one to me was the weakest season. And that's because it just took me a while to get to know who who was who and what everybody was all about. That's it. And isn't that how most series are, though? Yes. See, season one is normally the weakest because they're laying all the foundation. Yes. But I thought it was definitely well acted, well written. I mean, mm -hmm. they basically, like I said, they basically followed the book verbatim, um, which I wish they would have done the entire series that way. Spoiler alert for those that haven't. <laughs> they didn't. Um, but um, I really also was very, you asked me one of my characters. I was very intrigued by the Daenerys character. Her from season yeah, I was say, or from episode which one, one uh, episode one to episode eight. Well, there's only one Daenerys. Well, yeah, character. I'm sorry, I'm thinking about hearing yeah. the last name, but um, but because her brother you know, was kind um, of a dick. Yeah, episode one to episode eight, her full her transformation that she made, um, was pretty cool to see. Like, I think she had the biggest transformation in the first season than anybody else. I would agree with that. I mean, I don't know if it was necessarily just out of survival or if it was her her plan from start to finish. I mean, I guess it had to be because. Uh, well, I don't think it was her plan because she, I don't, I don't, I'm damn sure didn't think she knew she was getting sold to. No, she didn't. I mean, the one, Dothraki happened, and all that. Yeah. Once they killed her brother, once she had her brother killed or basically ordered it or whatever, mm -hmm. that was that's when you started to see who she's going to become. Very true. And that does play into all the way to season eight. And we will get there, folks, I promise, uh, as far as she's concerned. Uh, definitely one of the favorited characters. Like you, I, I like Jon Snow. Um, I... I was invested in the Ed, uh, Ned, excuse me, but like I said, that didn't go over so well. No, that was um, a great shocker for those that didn't know about the in the book. That was yes. a great shocking moment um, for it. I did also like the the what a cool thing. And yes, like I said, they did fall in the book, but the fact that it was in there was the uh, when they found the dire wolves. And there was just enough for the Starks, but then they found that albino one that was basically the bastard pup that they gave to the bastard son. Yeah. You know, I thought that was really, really cool the way that the author wrote that. And it was it's a neat idea to me. I really, I really like that. Yes. And lo and behold, we didn't even know what half of what we were in for, uh, just based on that. And, Amen. Uh, you guys out there that are listening, you know, if you want to leave us a comment, 
Let us know what you think about Game of Thrones, specifically season one. Next week, we are going to go dive into season two, and it's going to start to get a little deeper and deeper uh, because there's so much to say. And and I think show, I mean, we can give it away. We don't have to worry about spoilers. I mean, if you haven't seen it by now, um, what are you waiting for? You know? True. I mean, I mean, most definitely. I'm sure most of the people that are listening and slash watching have already know the outcome of all the characters. And I'm not worried about spoiler, but I don't want to talk about things that happen in season seven. No, the no. character we're discussing in season one because right, there's right. a lot of there's a lot of things they have to necessarily go through uh, to get there to get Agreed. to that there. So. um you got anything for the good people at home before we get on out of here? Uh, just as always, you know, appreciate you watching, listening. If you're on YouTube, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, whatever genre or format that you're listening to us, please hit the subscribe button. Give us a, give us a thumbs up or whatever. Definitely give hit us that, a thumbs up. If, if you're on YouTube, hit that uh, bell so you get notifications for when we uh, do post our videos. And again, appreciate you watching, listening. Just real quick for these people that always on YouTube, like, why does everybody on these YouTube channels say hit the like button? Uh, when that thumbs up button is pressed, every time it's pressed, YouTube sends the video out to X amount of more people so that it helps you grow. So the more likes you get, the more your channel is allowed to grow. So, uh, help this little channel out and hit that like button on this video for us yes sir all right and we will see you next week got some good stuff coming and love each other tomorrow's not promise that's right stay positive stay blessed see ya <laughs>